Hello all, welcome to the lecture on the module uh, data visualization. So, in this lecture we are going to do data visualization where we are going to learn how to create basic plots using the matplot library. The basic plots includes scatterplot, histogram and bar plot. So, now let us see what data visualization is about. Data visualization allows us to quickly interpret the data and adjust different variables to see their effect. What do we mean by quickly interpreting the data? Because if we were to understand the data using numbers, then it would be difficult for us to understand the data and quickly interpret the data. But if we were to understand through graphical representation of data, it would make us, it would make the work easier in terms of interpretation and in terms of understanding. If you see here, the technology is also increasingly making it easier for us to do so because there are so many visualization techniques, tools that are available to do visualization to understand the data even more better than interpreting from the numbers. But why do we need to visualize the data? We can observe the patterns. You can also identify the extreme values that could be anomalies. And uh, if you want to interpret the data easily, then you have to go for visualization. So, these are the important points to visualize the data. So, Python offers multiple graphing libraries that offers diverse features. We are going to look at few graphing libraries that are available in Python and what is the need. First one is matplotlib which is used to create 2D graphs and plots and I have marked it as screen because we are going to look at matplotlib library in this lecture. The next one is pandas visualization which has easy to use interface and that was built on top of matplotlib. The next one is Seaborn. It provides a high level interface for drawing attractive and informative statistical graphics and that was also built on top of matplotlib. Whatever graph and plots that you are creating using Seaborn library can also be created using matplot library and you can also have a control on what insights you can get out of your plot using Seaborn. The next one is ggplot. ggplot is used whenever you want to do uh, advanced graphics and this ggplot is entirely based on R's ggplot. R is another programming language that is used for analytics and it has a package called ggplot2 which is entirely dedicated for doing visualization and uh, in Python we have ggplot that is based on R's ggplot2 and it basically uses grammars of graphics. The next is plot ly. If you want to create interactive plots, then you can go for plot ly. But in this course, we are going to look at two graphing libraries that are matplotlib and seaborn. First, we are going to look at a matplot library. So, let us see what matplot library is about. Matplot library is a 2D plotting library which produces good quality figures. Although it has its origin in emulating the MATLAB graphic commands, it is independent of MATLAB. It makes heavy use of NumPy and other extension code to provide good performance even for large arrays. So, this is the overview of the matplotlib library. So, under the matplotlib library, we are going to look at a plot called scatterplot. So, let us see what is the scatterplot first. A scatterplot is basically a set of points that represents the values that are obtained for two different variables plotted on a horizontal and vertical axis. So, if you look at a scatter plot, you will have two axes to it x and y and the points from the data frame will be scattered all over the place of the plot or in a separate pattern. And using that and using the variables that you have given as an input, you will get the relationship out of it. And there can be a question when to use the scatter plots. So, basically the scatter plots are used to convey the relationship between any two numerical variables, how one variable vary with respect to the other variable. And the scatter plots are also sometimes called as correlation plots because they show how two variables are correlated, whether they are negatively correlated or positively correlated. All those information you can get that by looking at the patterns of your scatter plots. So, now we are going to import the data into spider to do a scatter plot. Prior to importing the data, we have to import the necessary libraries. The first library is pandas and we have imported it with the allies pd and we have to import the pandas library to work with data frames. And then we will also be doing some numerical operations on it. So, we need to import numpy as np. And then since we are going to use the matplotlib library, 
and we have to import pyplot from the matplotlib as plt and we use this to do visualization. Now we can import the data into spider using the read underscore csv command and uh, we have set the first column as the index column and we have considered all the question marks as default NAND values so that we can do any operations that are related to NAND values. So cars underscore data is your data frame now and the size of it is 1436 with 10 columns. We are going to remove all the missing values from the data frame because we are going to visualize the data. In that case, I do not want to consider all the missing values, rather I just want to consider all the rows where there are no missing values. So in that case, if you want to drop out all the records where there are missing values, then you can use the command called drop na preceded with the data frame name and inside the function if you set access is equal to 0, then you consider all the rows where there are missing values and remove that. I have also given in place is equal to true that is because I have not assigned this to a new data frame as cars underscore data 2 or are in the existing data frame. Rather I have just used in place is equal to true. By setting in place is equal to true, the modifications that you are making here will be reflected in the data. If you do not give this, the records will not be dropped from your data frame. If you look at the size of your data frame after removing the missing values, it turned out to be having 1096 observations with 10 columns. So we have left out around 400 observations. So now let us see how to create a scatter plot. So for creating a scatter plot, scatter is the function. Since we are doing it from the matplotlib library, we have saved pyplot as plt. So that is why. I have used the allies called plt to access the function scatter and inside the function I have given the x coordinate variable that is h and I have also given the y coordinate variable that is price. So it is very evident that we are going to check the relationship between h and price through scatter plot. And the next thing is I have given red under the parameter c that means that I am going to color the markers using the red color. So we will see what marker is when we get the output. This line will produce a scatter plot but if you want to add title to your plot and if you want to add labels to your x axis and y axis you can also give that. So if you want to add title to your plot you can give it as plt.title and inside that I have just given it as scatter plot of prices age of the cars and uh, the x label represents the age which are in months and the y axis represents the price which are in euros. Now we have created a scatter plot. To show the scatter plot you have to use plt.show. Even if you select the line still plt.y label you will be able to show the plot since this is a standardized code whenever you are building your plots layer by layer by giving the type of plot first and then giving titles after that, then you have to run everything in one shot till plot.show to get all the information in a single plot. So now let us see what is the output by using the scatter function. Here this is the scatter plot to show the relationship between price of the car and the age of the car. So if you see from the output your x axis represents the age and y axis represents the price. If you see here as the age increases the price decreases. The points that are shown here are called as markers and the vertical line that is shown here are ticks and the 60, 70, 80 are called tick labels. Since these are in x axis these are called x ticks and x labels and these lines are called y ticks and these values are called y tick labels. So now we are going to see how to create the histogram. Before creating we need to know what histogram is. So what is a histogram? It is a graphical representation of data using bars of different heights. So whenever you have a numerical variable and if you want to check the frequency distribution of the variables you can go for histogram. So that the each bar will give you different heights that represents the frequencies and the histogram groups numbers into ranges because on the x axis you will have intervals or ranges that can also be called as bins 
and for each of the bins you will get a corresponding frequency by looking at the height of each bus. So, when to use the histogram as I have mentioned to represent the frequency distribution of any numerical variables you can look for histogram. Now, we will see how to create a histogram using matplotlib. So, the command is hist that stands for histogram and that is from the library called pyplot, library called matplotlib and pyplot is the sub library that is available under matplot and plt is just an allies to the pyplot. And inside the function I have just given kilometer from the cars underscore data data frame. So, that becomes the x axis. So, we are creating a histogram with the default arguments because we have just given the x variable alone. And let us look at the output. So, here is the histogram with default arguments. On the x axis you have the bins. The first bin is from 0 to 50,000 and the second bin is from 50,001 to 1 lakh and the third bin is from 1 lakh 1 to 1 lakh 50,000. For example, using this histogram I am not able to get the exact bin range or the exact range with the corresponding frequency because it does not give me the separation between each bars. So, now what I can do here is I can create a histogram by specifying the edge color and the number of bins I have. If I have too many bins then it would not be able to easier for us to understand the frequencies for each interval. In that case you can specify or fix the number of bins as well. So, here the, we are using the same command where we have fixed the x coordinate that is kilometer since we are looking at the frequency distribution of the kilometer of the car and the color for the bars will be green and uh, the edge color of the bars I am giving it as white. So, that there is a clear demarcation between two bars and I have fixed the number of bins as 5. And you can also add title, x label and the y label to your plot. Here the title for the plot is histogram of kilometer and the x label is kilometer and the y label is frequency. And if you give plt dot show and if you run from plt dot hist to plt dot show you will get a histogram with the specified number of bits. So, here is the output that we get from the previous code. So, here we are looking at the frequency distribution of kilometer of the cars and it shows that most of the cars have traveled between 50,000 to 1 lakh kilometer and there are only few cars with more distance traveled. Now, if you see that there is a clear demarcation between each of the bars and you will be able to look at the frequencies of it easily. Next, we are going to look at a bar plot. Let us see what is a bar plot. Bar plot is a plot that represents categorical data with rectangular bars. Whenever you have a categorical data and if you want to look at the frequencies of each categories in a variable, then we will look at in terms of bar plot. Bar plot is also similar to histogram, there would not be any space in between the bars for the histogram because you are looking at in terms of continuous range, but here you will be looking at in terms of frequencies of categories, so you will have space in between the bars. That is what the difference between the bar and the histogram and you use bar plot for a categorical variable and we use histogram for a numerical variable. And those length of the bar is basically depicts the frequencies of each categories. And when to use a bar plot to represent the frequency distribution of any categorical variables and the bar diagram makes it easier to compare sets of data between different groups. If you have a free categorical variable and if you have so many categories that under that variable, if you want to look at distribution of each variable or how each category is distributed, then bar diagram is easier to interpret more on the categories of a variable. Now, let us see how to create a bar plot. Basically, you have to have an array which shows the counts of each categories and the next object or the next variable represents the fuel type. Here we have petrol, diesel and CNG as fuel types of the cars and uh, since we know that a priori I have just given, otherwise you can also give value underscore counts as an input because that will have the category as well as the frequencies. And I have given index because on the x axis it should know the index. The index is whatever is the length of fuel type. What is the length of the fuel type? It would be 3. So, the range would be 0, 1 and 2. 
and to create a bar plot dot bar is the function that is from the pi plot sub library and inside the function you just basically need to give what should be there in the x axis and what should be there in the y axis and x axis I want the index to be present and on the y axis I want the counts to be present and I am going to color my bars differently red will go for petrol and diesel will be colored based on blue color and CNG will be colored based on CYAAN color and I have also given the title and the labels for x and y axis so that I can create a bar plot which will show the frequencies of the fuel type categories and as I have mentioned earlier x index is nothing but x coordinate and count will represent the height of the bar and height of the bars have been represented using counts. So, this is the output that we got. But if you see on the x axis you have only the range, here we are not able to find out which is petrol, which is diesel or which is CNG. In that case you can also specify the labels to your x axis by giving x ticks. So, all the other codes remains the same, but since I just want to add labels to each of the bars on the x axis that can be given using x ticks, you can set the labels of the x ticks using fuel type because you have already assigned a variable called fuel type with some string values. So, that will be labels for the x ticks. You can also set the location for x ticks where petrol should be present and diesel should be present and CNG should be present and I have given rotation is equal to 90 so that all the labels will be in 90 degree rotation. So, now let us see how the plot will look like. Here if you see this the first bar is corresponding to the petrol uh, fuel type and it is very evident that most of the cars around uh, 900 and odd cars have the fuel type as petrol and there are only few cars for which the fuel type is about diesel and CNG. Now we have come to the end of the session. In this lecture we have learned how to create basic plots using matplot library. Those basic plots were scatter plot, histogram and bar plot. Thank you.